here mixing up some epoxy here that we're going to be putting down in the floor. Right now we're adding color pigment to the to the epoxy so we can have a gray. This is the hardener we're adding. It's a two-part container. Two parts resin, one part hardener. This is the hardener we're putting in now. Or activator. Hardener or activator they call it. And you mix this for how long? We mix this between anywhere between two to three minutes. It all depends on the temperature. If we're outside and if the humidity is really high, you want two minutes because it will be activated with the temperature as well. And the air conditioning area right here, I'm going to go three minutes. You want to make sure it's flagellated. The hardener is mixed well with the resin and flagellates well. You kick the resin over evenly. We don't have no soft spots. One kit does approximately how many square feet? I don't do anywhere between 100 to 100. It all depends on the millage. If you're going 10 mils, you can probably get 100 square feet per gallon. Okay. 80 to 100. And it, and it, it depends on the floor, see how rough the floor is. Right. If you've got a nice, round, smooth floor, you'll get 100 square feet or more. Okay. As a rule, as a rule, I like to use a gay break or, or, or uh, uh, freeze you can have notches cut in them, 10 mil, 20 mil, 5 mil, that way it's even all the way across. That way, that way, you know you got 10 mils all through or 5 mils, whatever's whatever required or, or spec. You also, you also got 250 square feet, you know that. 200 what? 250 square feet. We're making this work. Right. You see how that black turned light gray? Mm -hmm. Nice we had them clogs of yours. Get a big brush. So, oh, we gotta wet that roller up first.
resin. It's a white. Alright. This is a three part. We've got the resin, the hardener, and the pigment. So we have three parts we add to this. We are just doing a clear. We just add the hardener and the resin. That would be it. It would just be a clear coat. Since we're doing pigment, it has to be a color, so we add the pigment ourselves. And all are available at ExtremePolishingSystems.com, and you can order with the color, whatever color well, you want. Whatever color you want. We, we'll even custom color for you. When handling this material, you need to keep it in a cool area. If it's outside, you don't want to keep it in direct light or, or, or heat it because of temperature, it will affect your catalyst time, your kickover time. So you need to keep it kind of cool or in the shade if you have possible. Put the whole color pack in. You want to make sure you squeeze everything out because any difference in the amount you put in will change the color of the floor. skid since it's a non-skid surface.
when you're doing your floor, when you're applicating one thing, the prep, prep of the floor is the most important part of the floor. For the epoxy to bond, you have to have proper prep. That means breaking the sealer, taking all this, the, the coating of the sealer off, and making grooves in the floor. When the epoxy kicks over, the more grooves, if you blast track it or if you grind it, the more grooves that are in the floor, the better for the epoxy, because when the epoxy kicks over, it expands, locks into all them grooves. So that's why it's important for the prep to be done properly. That's why they should use the Concrete Genie or a nice grinder. Concrete Genie is what we recommend. Um, they have the best diamonds in the world, and they, uh, they manufacture their own machines as well. And they, they back their stuff 110%. Right, we offer a 100% money back guarantee on any product that we sell. Very important if you get any epoxy on anything to remove it right away. Once it cures out, it's bonded to whatever it's on. So it's very important. You notice we got some spills down here. We're going to clean them up right now. Usually, as a rule, we use alcohol, a little bit of alcohol in a rag, and we wipe them off. Denatured alcohol is a product we usually use. You can buy it at any Home Depot or Lowe's. You don't want to buy any kind of solvent that will attack your floor that you're trying to clean. That's why we use the alcohol. Now you notice I'm going to be putting these on. These are called cleats. We use them so we can walk out on the epoxy without leaving marks. We do manufacture these ourselves, and we call them. Oh, those those are going to be in the yeah. They're in the new catalog. They're um they're just they're just cleats. They're just cleats, but they're uh, yeah. They're uh, made. At, they're like um, they're beautiful. They're going to see a video. We're going to, we're going to do this. We're going to video you putting these on, and then we'll video people okay. putting the new ones on there in the go. same one. So stay tuned for another great extreme video. Lately, a lot of the people I work for, they don't like to do a lot of detail work. They just want to, you know, half, half asset kind of. A lot of these smaller epoxy companies. Because it takes a little longer to do, but you got a better product for it. So then, that's the next step right
Yeah, they got a guard coming over. What is this brown? throw a light 20% aggregate for non-skid. It's in an area that has a lot of water, soda, and stuff that can slip. So we're going to add an, aggr an aggregate to it. It's a Q28 grind. Uh, we usually use uh, aluminum oxide. This time we're using a quartz. We really recommend aluminum oxide. There's an art to it. When you throw, I pick up a puddle, I feather it out. And you throw up into the air. You never throw down to the floor because you'll push epoxy and you'll leave ridges. So it's always up, 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 and you let it fan out, and then you get yourself a texture. And it's all in your preference what, what type of texture you want, heavy texture, medium texture, you can do all them systems. Quartz is a, uh, you got to fill 100% for the lock and you got to seal it. 